My name is Stacy Miller and I'm a certified genetic counselor. Um, I always tell people that what I do is cancer risk assessment. So we look at individuals' personal history, we take a detailed family history to see could they be at risk for certain types of cancer and if so, is there anything we can do for early detection and prevention. We actually know that um, probably anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of cancers have a genetic component or a hereditary component. Um, of that group, about 5 to 10 percent we have a pretty good understanding of, meaning we know the specific genes that are traveling in families. Even if we don't find something, or even if you choose not to do testing, we can sit down and say, okay, what if any personal risk factors do you have? Is there any family history that means that we should be doing screening earlier or more frequent screening or different types of screening? And so we develop a cancer prevention plan for anyone that walks in here. My job is to kind of tease through the family history to understand what is the risk for you based on all the different people and all the different types of cancer that are in the family. And a lot of people who felt like the risk for cancer was much higher We'll leave, we'll leave the session relieved. On the flip side, you know, there is a lot of people that may be, for example, high risk for colon cancer or breast cancer that don't realize that their screening should be different than the general population screening. I mean, our ultimate goal is that either we catch it early enough that they don't have to go through more significant cancer treatment or we go down the preventive route and we prevent them from getting cancer at all. They're primarily those that have recently been diagnosed with a cancer, often at a young age, or maybe they've had multiple cancers, or they have cancer plus a significant family history. And I also have people come through that are unaffected, but have a very significant family history. Probably the most well-known is the hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome. That is um, associated with the breast cancer 1 and breast cancer 2 genes, and they can be carried, these gene mutations can be carried by both men and women, but they affect women uh, more greatly because the increased risk for cancer is primarily for the breast and the ovaries. When genetics first got started, well over 10 to 15 years ago, a big fear was that if I go out there and get a genetic test and I find out that I have a gene mutation that increases my risk for cancer or for a um, you know, muscle degeneration disorder or a heart disorder, the fear was that if I went to go get a health insurance policy that they wouldn't cover me and they would say that my gene mutation was a pre-existing condition. Um, we have worked very hard uh, to get state laws and federal laws in place that make that illegal. Probably the most significant of those laws is the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or we call it GINA, which was signed in 2008 by President Bush. And that one is both for um, protecting your health insurance, whether it's individual or group, and it's also protecting people from having any discrimination from their employers. So basically, if you have a gene mutation that predisposes you to whatever the disease may be, this law says it's illegal for them to raise your rates, deny you coverage, or drop you from coverage.